Welcome back to Halftime Report on CNBC TV 18. Well, for now, for the market, it's not doing too much, to be honest. Uh, very quiet, just like ambling within a 50, 100 point range. And now absolutely flat, like 0.07%. So let's track some uh, stocks. The MNC Pharma stocks, Abbott, GSK Pharma are uh, in focus today. Ekta, why is that? Well, there are brokerage nodes, there are management meets which have taken place within this entire space. So that's the reason I'm tracking it. So I'll start with CLSA, which is written on Abbott. Say they have a buy rating. The target is raised to around 22,510 rupees on that particular stock. They said that uh, they've delivered double-digit growth in FI22 despite no COVID-19 product in their portfolio. The company is seeing incremental competition for one of their key brands, which is basically called Dufiston. And focus is now on introducing new key therapies which should support medium-term uh, earnings outlook for Abbott. They've tweaked their EPS by around 1% to 3% on higher SG&A costs, which is basically selling and general and admin, administrative costs. Now, GSK is also in focus because they held an analyst meet. And a couple of uh, key takeaways is that the company overall gets around 78% of its business from prescriptions, 22% of its sales from vaccines. And remember that they are very big in the vaccine space. The prescription business is skewed towards the acute segment, which is basically cough, colds, etc., which is 95% of their portfolio. And and the prescription business, which is basically acute focus, is expected to deliver strong growth in Q2 of FY23. The company is also guided to around 8 to 9% price hike in FY23. Future levers of EBITDA margin expansion are around, according to them, based on growth in promoted brands, new launches, cost-saving initiatives, improved productivity within all of their market reps. But the main pain point is the vaccines business. So a pickup in the vaccines business will be interesting to watch. Remember that a lot of people actually delayed vac uh, taking vaccinations because of COVID-19, and there was some amount of apprehension with regards to that as well. So once the business normalizes, hopefully it should grow for GSK as well. Morgan Stanley is written on them. Uh, they say they have an underweight call and the target is 1416. They say it's rich valuations and relatively lower growth profile keeps them underweight. But Manglam, you're tracking a stock. Well, uh, I am tracking a stock, but before that, you know, I, I remember on the MNC pharmaceutical space itself, back in the day, you would tell us that uh, domestic pharma separate, but MNC pharma it's should like be treated as an FMCG. As an FMCG yeah. company, because, they because have brands the brands and, are yep. stronger and, you know, the Crocins of the world and the Augmentins of the world, all of them, Calpol. And the way know, we they... pop these medicines now, it's almost become like FMCG. Yeah, right? and I mean, then... you go out there, you get OTC medicines and... I think you sometimes pop it more than these vitamins and... Most you know, definitely but the debate yeah, but for Dolo 650 was exactly on that because yeah. I spoke to a lot mm -hmm. of people within the industry and they said that the uh, the brand itself was so strong in the 650 MG right. segment of paracetamol that it just became strong word of mouth and this is yeah. keeping the allegations of freebies right. aside. We're just talking about how the brand, brand has grown during COVID-19. And it so happens that at times, you know, if, uh, an, uh, if a pharmaceutical company has an extremely strong brand, which it cannot scale up, an FMCG company goes ahead and acquires and that. Acquires That's what happened it. with Horlicks. Uh, <laughs>